you know, I'm introducing my topic. And one of the first things that we do is we start with guiding questions. Um, so, you know, here's some questions I might ask. I want to kind of get a sense of how much do they know about artificial intelligence? Um, most, you know, I know I often resorted to think pair share. That was like, you know, that was my go-to strategy. I'm just going to have them um, think about it first. Okay, what's your answer? Then I'm going to have them lean over to their AV partner, their shoulder partner, and they're going to have a quick conversation. And that was that. As I'm thinking now, you know, especially with the, you know, our, our protocols, our COVID protocols, and maybe our students are, haven't been used to talking to other students in a good while. Jenny, what might be other, other strategies that you might use to engage them in discussion? Yeah, so you can have students, you know, sit side by side and, and just, you know, talk to each other that way. But what about, you know, having a conversation um, you know, with somebody across the room, they can actually zoom with each other. You can do breakout rooms and and have you know conversations with other people in other places. Um, something that would be really, really great to especially for those kids that maybe don't come with a lot of background knowledge, give them a picture. They can talk about a picture of robots. They they might not have the vocabulary to to discuss it. Um, and so giving them some words, some pictures, um, using a Google slide with you know a picture of some examples of robots, and then maybe seeing if they could label it or if they could talk about it, um, you know, that way with each other, but giving them something to kind of spark that conversation, I would especially use a picture on a Google slide and then have them be able to, to share with each other. So just to piggyback on that, that's right. Like I probably would say, you know what, if you're going to have a question like this, just very quickly go to insert image, search the web and find some pictures. And in fact, might even do it live during, you know, like, hey, class, let's add some pictures to this slide here. So I might create a new slide and say, OK, what are things that use artificial intelligence? Um, you probably have one right in your hand right now right on your desk, right? Uh, the cell phone. Okay, what else is, is using, you know, technology and making our life easier? Oh, we now have right, automatic vacuums, <laughs> right? And smart cars. Mm -hmm. And so maybe together we build this, this uh, picture wall, right? Uh, and the kids are contributing. And now you have visuals. Now you have engagement with your, your audience, your students. You're giving them agency where they can come up with, they can, maybe they don't actually know what artificial intelligence is, but they can research and those skills are invaluable. Being able to look up a word, get a picture, be able to share it with the class um, and then, and then use that as a reference throughout the whole time that you're focusing on the topic. That's powerful. Right. And, and let's not forget, you know, the traditional, the good old, you know, posters and they might do depending on, on, Again, you know, once hopefully we, we get out of uh, our, you know, our pandemic and, and things kind of ease up, maybe we could go back to doing gallery walks and you make a poster and each poster has a topic such as artificial intelligence or other, you know, what, uh, what kind of robots are being used in the military, things like that. And, and just kind of gathering information as we go. All right. Well, let's see. Yeah. Go ahead. I did something like you were talking about with the a Google slide, you know, making an, another slide. Everybody's adding their own pictures, adding some labels, adding some words in there. You're giving them something to, to refer to. Even if it's a digital copy that's, you know, posted on Canvas or something, they can go back and refer to and, and get those words, get those pictures, use it almost like a word bank for, for later on. Yes. I always think about my end goal. And my end goal is for them to write a short um, argumentative or persuasive uh, piece with some, you know, uh, text citations. So I want them to gather as we're talking and sharing, they're gathering this information. So at the end, they can then use it in their writing.